In this example, we're going to test a hypothesis about a proportion. Let's suppose we wanted to know how many cadets are from the state of Virginia. How many are in state? Now, I could ask all 1,500 cadets. That's kind of a lengthy, involved process. What I'd like to do is to make an estimate of that proportion or that percentage based on a sample. So I take a sample of 50 cadets and I ask them, 21 reply they're from Virginia. And the hypothesis, the claim is that actually more than 35% of the cadets at VMI are from Virginia. And I want to see if that's a, an accurate statement based on my statistics here, based on my sample. And I'm going to do that using a 5% significance level. So let's go through the step-by-step -step process of how we do that. The first step is to always determine the parameter being studied. In 106, we study f three different parameters, a percentage, a mean, or a standard deviation. What I recommend is always begin by underlining the claim, which we have here. And the claim is going to give you a clue on what you're studying. In fact, it's going to state it very explicitly. The claim that more than 35% of the cadets are from Virginia. Well, when I see a claim that involves a percentage, then I know I'm working with a P, or a proportion. And that's the parameter I'm studying. After I know the parameter, the next step is to state my null and alternate hypothesis. Now, the null hypothesis is always going to have equality. And it begins by stating the parameter. So P equals 0.35. Now notice I write it as a decimal, a proportion, not a percentage, not 35%. Though we go back and forth between the two, when we write it and we use the numbers in the calculators, we have to remember to use the decimal versions, 0.35. The alternate is, and this is the claim in this case, that actually P is greater than 0.35, or that more than 35% of the cadets are from Virginia. Okay, what's the next step? I've gotten that far, I need to go through and read my problem real carefully, and every number I see in there is important. I need to highlight it, and I need to give it its correct statistical symbol. So I see a 50. 50 is the n, the sample size. I see x is equal to 21. That's the number of cadets that are actually from Virginia in this sample. Sometimes we call that the number of successes. Alpha, my significance level, is 0 0.05. And in the case of studying a per percentage or a proportion, we have this little formula, p hat equals x over n. And in this case, that's 21 over 50, or 0.42. In these kind of problems, you're always either given an x or a p hat. And given one, you can always calculate the other. Now, in this sample, 42%. P equals 0.42 said they're from Virginia, so that might indicate to you, well, there we've, we've answered the question. More than 35% of the cadets in our sample are from Virginia, so actually there's 42%, so do we really need to go any further? Well, here's where the important uh, decision-making process comes in. We use statistics to see if this sample is significant or if perhaps it was just a fluke. And we can do that using the techniques that we've studied. Going on to the next step, now that I know the parameter that I'm using, a P, I know my null and alternate hypothesis, and I've gathered all the significant uh, numbers from my uh, problem statement, I need to select my probability distribution. In this case, it's going to be a normal. Whenever we test a percentage or a proportion, we use a normal. And to be careful, I should always check to see the requirements are satisfied before I go any further. Uh, for a normal distribution, when I'm testing a proportion, the number of successes and the number of failures need to be greater than 5. And we write that as an equation, NP and NQ greater than 5. In this case, that's clearly it. N is 50, P is 0.35, Q is 0.65, or 1 minus P and they're both greater than 5, so we're good to go on to the next step. Now we do our sketch and lay out our framework for making our decision. Since the claim was greater than, we know it's going to be a right-tail test. 
and in the right tail, that's the rejection region, I'll put 0.05 probability. That's my significance level right here. I'll need to have the critical value, that Z value that has 0.05 probability to the right. I can get that by just looking at inverse norm 0.95, which is the area to the left of the critical value, and the calculator will give me 1.645. Now the next things I'm, I'm going to need are my test statistic and my p-value. We'll get those in the next step, but I've displayed them all here already on the graph. The calculator function you're going to use is one prob z test. Make it nice and easy, and we'll get a z value of 1.038. That's the test statistic. And the p value is the area to the right of the test statistic. Now, in this case, I know it's to the right because back here in my alternate, I used a greater than sign, so I'm going to the right. It's a right tail test. So the area with the horizontal slashes from upper left to lower right represents the P area, the P value, and it's 0.15. So now I come to the point where I can either reject or fail to reject the hypothesis. Well, I have two different ways to do it. I have a traditional method, and the traditional method I fail to reject the null because the test statistic is not in the rejection region. I have another way to also come to this conclusion, and they always, always give you the same conclusion. The p-value method, and in this case I'd fail to reject the null because the p-value is greater than 0.05, which is the significance level. And we can see in the graph again, my test statistic right here is to the left of the critical value, so it's not in the rejection region. And the p-value, all of this shaded area, is much larger than the alpha, which is the significance level. So finally, I can make my summary statement now. And to do it, it's really simple. I go back and I look at, did my data support the claim or not? Well, there's the data. Based on the data, I failed to reject my null hypothesis. So my data is pointing here to H0. My claim, however, was down here that P was greater than 0.35. Well, the data does not support the claim. So now I can construct my final sentence by simply saying the data does not support the claim, and now just copy the claim that we underlined in the very first uh, step. The data does not support the claim that more than 35% of the VMI cadets are from Virginia.